Hi friends. The vibes that we're bringing to this video today, gardening shirt. Available on Cotton Bureau. Available in a lot of colors, but because I'm trying not to wear black or gray all the time, I ordered it in construction site orange and it's growing on me. <laughs> it brought me a lot of joy today when I put it on and I just feel just glowy, so glowy. I'm also wearing bison earrings because why the heck not? Why would I not wear these? They're incredible. And I put on full glam makeup to go absolutely nowhere but to talk to you and tried to find something that would offset the orange shirt. Nothing on the planet will. But that is not why sabbatical Sarah, that is me, is here today. Today I am here to talk about perfume with you. Oh my gosh, Sarah, that has nothing to do with your channel. Welcome to <laughs> Sarah's channel 2.0, where I talk about anything that I want to because I'm on sabbatical and I can. <laughs> so today I have the discovery set from Commodity. What is Commodity, you ask? Well, it is a perfume company. <laughs> I was gonna take this off before I started the video and I didn't do that. I didn't take the plastic off before I started the video because I didn't want to be tempted to smell these things or read about them before I was doing it with you because that is this video. I am going to be smelling the scents from Commodity, the scents within our book, gold, velvet, moss, paper, and milk. And when I saw that there was a company making a perfume called Paper, I was like, my name, <laughs> you're calling it. I love these little sets. A discovery set in the perfume world is basically a little tiny set of samples so that you can try everything. And then if you like it, you can order it. I cut up an old greeting card to make <laughs> little scent papers, but they also sent me some. So I have been on a perfume journey. I am still very much an amateur in the perfume world, and I am trying to smell everything I can get my hands on. I've read four books on perfume now, because when I go hobby, I hobby hard. We hobby with a vengeance. We hobby. So I've been reading books about perfume. I've actually been dabbling with making my own perfume oils um, with the spring flowers that are outside in my garden right now, which I am enjoying so very much. That's been such a delight. And I just, I want to test out these things, especially when they are applicable in theme, like book. I have a whole design series. Actually, am I wearing this today? I am. I have a whole design series about books and I am a paper person and I'm looking at this and my heart is absolutely breaking because there are two samples of moss in here and none of paper. <laughs> so we're not smelling paper today. I'll have to reach out to them <laughs> and let them know. Sad. But let's get started because I've been talking for several minutes and I just want to smell some things with you. So I'm going to spray these on their little papers. I'm going to smell them for the first time and describe them to you. And hopefully that's fun. I also have the notes in here, but I'm not looking at those because I'd like to smell them first. And then we can see how I did. So I will start with book because book is made of paper. And while it is not paper, let us sniff. Ooh, ooh. I need to make a sign for the basement door that says, <laughs> now on air or something like that. I'll always have visitors and that's okay. So book is like a little bit fresher than I expected. I definitely get a little of that like book binding and maybe a little bit of leather, but it feels, gonna be a lot of thinking in this. Hopefully <laughs> my thinking face isn't ugly. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna read the notes because this one's throwing me for a loop. All right, so book. This says, black tea and bergamot. Okay, yeah, the bergamot. I was thinking something citrus, but I was afraid to say it. 
<laughs> so bergamot. Yeah, I get that. That's kind of that freshness that I'm feeling. And the black tea, I think that's, that's why it feels really like comforting to me. It's definitely a comforting smell. It's like the experience of reading a good book and resting and like in a, in a peaceful place while windows open. There's like a breeze coming in. And then skin musk and cedar wood, sort of that, the heart notes. Cedar is one of my absolute favorites. I love a cedar tree. I love the smell of cedar. I've been playing with um, cedar essential oils in the candles that I've been making. I've been making candles on sabbatical because they burn a lot of candles and I got tired of paying for them. So I spent money, of course, more money than I would have for a candle, but I've made dozens of candles in the last couple months and that's been really fun. And then finally at the end here is some sandalwood, which I also really love. One of the things about commodity that I think is interesting is that they put out three different types of scents. This one is called the personal collection. They are personal, expressive, and bold. And personal is supposed to be something that is more like soft and ethereal and intimate. Like it stays closer to you rather than having a, a big solage, which is the, <laughs> the fancy perfume word for when a perfume is everywhere. It's wafting off of you and everyone in the room is like, who smells good? Um, these are more personal and close. I mean, reading the notes, I'm not surprised that I like this. These are a lot of notes that I really enjoy, but I really like how these are put together. Okay. Yeah, that's a winner. We like that one a lot. And I got makeup from my notes <laughs> on the paper. Classy. All right. The next one in the lineup is gold. Oh, oh, that smells like gold. Like gold doesn't have a smell, but if it did, it would be like this. That's definitely like got vanilla. It's sweet. It feels a little like sparkly though. Like it's got an effervescence to it. That's nice. This is definitely not like a Sarah fragrance. Like I don't think that this would be one that I would smell and think like, yes, this is what I want. This is what I want to smell like, but I'd be pretty happy if a friend of mine hugged me and was <laughs> wearing this. Gold is an essence of vanilla, sandalwood, and amber made ethereal with iso e super, which is a molecule that has been made pretty famous and um, is a little bit everywhere right now that is definitely in those like skin scents that people talk about. And a skin scent is like, what you naturally smell like, but better. Um, something warm and maybe there's like something comforting about it because it's more, it's really natural and feels kind of ethereal, like they said. So this one, yeah, has the ISO E Super, Amber, Sandalwood, and Vanilla. And I definitely pick up on that vanilla and the amber. It hits me with vanilla, which is surprising because that's supposed to be like the the base notes, the something that you get later while you're smelling, but yeah, I like that. All right. This one is velvet. Oh, okay. Yes. I get, oh, I get the velvet. This has like a, kind of like a throwback vibe. Like it's a velvet couch. And you're at a party and, and you're sitting next to someone who you don't know that well. But you're also going... <laughs> Okay, this is, a, this is a journey. But you're also kind of lonely, so you're not like mad that your thighs are touching a little on the couch. <laughs> that doesn't feel like me. And when it comes to perfume, I feel like everyone has such a different experience smelling different things. And what I bring to the table is just this like amateur Sarah who's really excited about perfume right now who just wants to smell things and enjoy them and learn about them and what's in them and how they're made and like how the science works and like, ooh, boy. But I think everyone kind of brings first and foremost, like, does this smell like me? Like, does this perfume smell like the best version of me? Does it smell like some aspirational me that I want to be in the future? Or does it smell like me on a date or me at brunch or me in a cabin? Like, this one definitely doesn't smell like me, 
but I'm enjoying the journey it's taking me on. So velvet, it says, oh yeah, okay. It's got rose in it. Rose always gives me that like vintage vibe, like that vintage couch, you know, that like grandma's house. All right, vanilla, rose, and amber with skin musk and clove buds. That's the clove is giving me that like sort of like clove cigarettes, college party. Yeah, that's fun. That's like a, a pretty unique scent. I'm enjoying, I'm enjoying having experienced that. All right, now we have the double moss, a double hit of moss. <laughs> now, I love moss in general. Half of my yard is moss because I live in the Pacific Northwest and lawns are ridiculous. And so now like half of my yard that's in shade is moss and the other half is clover and the bees love it. And I love the bees. I want them to pollinate my garden and just generally thrive. So I'm really good with moss. I have a lot of moss in my life. I like to go to forests and touch moss and just like appreciate it. So I feel like I bring a lot of weight to this one. Like I want to love this. Just telling you so you know. Hmm. Interesting. I'm getting something really citrusy, like a, what is that, like a citrus cleaner, like a pledge, <laughs> like cleaning my parents' wood furniture <laughs> when I was eight years old. I'm curious. I'm very curious. About this. All right. Okay, there we go. Bergamot. Yep. Moss is green and citrus aroma of bergamot, oak moss, and petty grain is with, made weightless, weightless with a molecular cloud of musk. A lot of perfumes have oak moss in them and that's sort of become somewhat controversial because oak moss um was like outlawed i don't know all of the details exactly but using actual oak moss because of some allergy issues um has been regulated quite a bit so i know most of the oak moss being used in perfumes is now synthetic although most things used in perfumes are synthetic and that actually um because it's my first perfume video i'm gonna nerd out for a moment but in one of the books that i read about the making of perfume and the science of perfume it talked a lot about how people have an idea of natural being better than synthetic but in reality like when you go smell a flower in the garden on the vine or on in the ground the smell of that is made up of so many different molecules and so many different things that if you were to pick that flower and make it into an essential oil or make it into an ingredient for a perfume, you're not going to actually get all of the things that work together to create that fresh sm flower smell. You'll get some of it, but you won't get all of it. So what perfumers do in the lab as they're creating things is pull together naturals and synthetics and basically like paint with smell like they're trying to create a a picture of what nature does so well with the palette of colors that they have and i think that that's what makes the art of it is pulling together these unexpected things to create the scent that you're going for so i think that it is totally okay for things to be made with synthetic ingredients. All right, so the final one then in this selection is a milk. And I have absolutely no idea what this would smell like other than what comes out of a cow. So no, I'm, I have low expectations, but we'll see what happens. Okay, okay. All right, milk. Yeah, this definitely has that like lactonic thing going on, that like creaminess, but it doesn't, sm doesn't smell like milk it smells it smells like something baked like an almond croissant or mm, that smells delicious definitely of all of these this is the most like gourmand of them which makes sense because it's named after a food and beverage that smells really good it says milk's warm notes of skin musk tonka bean and mahogany wood are made lush with skin musk and white cedar. Hmm. It says it's light as a feather and sweet and caressing. I don't think this is particularly light, 
in scent. Like I feel like this is maybe how it wears on the skin. Anything that you put on paper is gonna smell different than it smells on skin, which is why I like getting samples like this that I can then like wear for a week, smell on my skin, see how it wears, see how it mixes with my own bioflora. I'm getting like a little sourness at the end of milk. Hmm, that one's not my favorite. All right, so we smelled them, mine is paper, of which I am very sad. I would have known if I had opened it up, but then I probably would have smelled them. All right, so my favorite one of this set is most definitely Book. We're going full on. Oh, that smells really good. Yeah, that cedar wood, the sandalwood, the black tea. Book is a winner. So if you're feeling bookish and you like these kinds of notes or you'd like to try it out, um, I believe this set was around $20, which for Discovery sets is actually really pretty inexpensive. A lot of them are in that $25, $35, $40 range, depending on the company. Um, but if you're trying to get into perfume and you're curious, I think that this is actually a really great way to start. Get one of these Discovery sets and smell the range from a certain perfumer. They usually have things in common that, you know, like this one, they have a lot of amber, a lot of isoe super, a lot of like skin musks. But this one is the winner in my book. Still got to smell paper. I would say for the whole set, considering that I love one of them and was like, okay, I've got a few and a couple I probably wouldn't wear. Um, I'd give this a seven out of 10. <laughs> On the sabbatical Sarah scale of scent spontaneity, because that has an S, I don't know. I hope you're interested in perfume. If not, I hope you learned something. Um, I'm always learning something. I'm always trying a new hobby in the hopes of learning something and enjoying life a little bit more. I have definitely enjoyed going out in my garden and smelling flowers and smelling different herbs and leaves and things differently to see how things in their family or them themselves, like clematis or you know violets or things, um, are used in perfume. And I think that anything that makes me experience the world in a deeper way is something to be celebrated. Because, oh, I should find that quote. Hold on, hold please. I found <laughs> my journal and my notes. So I was reading in The Artist's Way this morning. It says, survival lies in sanity and sanity lies in paying attention. The quality of life is in proportion always to the capacity for delight. The capacity for delight is the gift of paying attention. So I hope that this was inspiring to you to either try some perfume or spray something you already have on yourself and breathe deeply and just pay attention in the world. Pay attention to the way that things smell and the color of flowers and the quality of the light and the birds outside your window. All of these things are incredible opportunities for delight if we can only pay attention and experience them. So I hope that you do that today. I'll be doing my best to do that today and I'll see you in the next one.